Yay! Hi guys. All right, let me see. This is that's dirty. Okay. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> so I was setting up the live, and I realized I had no clean um, paint brushes, so I had to go and wash some really quick. Uh, so now I do. I have clean brushes now. It's like one of those things I always forget and terrible at washing my brushes um, immediately. <laughs> so I usually leave them in water and just like they just kind of like sit there and stuff. So I apologize for the delay. Um, but uh, glad to see you all here. And I am excited today because I'm going to be playing around with the Would You Bend um, Patina Paste. I don't know if you've seen them before, but these are amazing. Um, the colors are so just like vibrant and bright, um, and I haven't really had time to kind of play around with these, so I'm excited to be able to do that today for this uh, Moroccan piece that I'm working on. Hey, Sunny. So, um, I'm using these uh, on the embellishments and um, possibly stenciling. I haven't quite decided yet, but we'll see uh, as I go along um, how much I uh, how much I want to add. You know, I always go a little bit at a time because um, I don't want to do too much and then kind of be like, oh, I don't know. So these patina paste are amazing. This one is the violet one. It's called patina, but it comes in colors more than patina. So it's not just patina colors, like this is the violet, Ooh. it's rather thick, so a little bit goes a long way. Here is one that is a patina color, the green, the bright green that you're probably familiar with. So there's this bright green, but there's like a sparkle to these two, which is what I need for this piece. I need it to look metallic. Um, and here's another color. I won't be using this one, but I just want to show you some of the colors that are available that I have. Um, so this is another, this is more of a silvery blue um, color. And then I have, this is called blue thallow, thallow, probably pronouncing it wrong, but here's a brighter blue. And here is a red as well. Ooh, this one's putting up a fight. Okay, there we go. So here's the red as well. So those are the colors that I have. Um, and I'll also be using some of the decor wax and also um, possibly some of the metallic pastes as well from Posh Chalk. They have a lot of uh, artistic decorative products. So these uh, metallic pastes come in a huge variety of colors as well and um, these are perfect for like if you're doing textures or uh, raised stenciling is great anything you want sort of like a 3d multi-dimensional effect the texture paste um, are perfect for that I do have I did bring two shades of the gold um, because I'm not sure which shade I will end up using but this is the 24 karat gold one um, that's you know like a true gold color that's very shiny can never have too much gold so ooh, I'm trying not to let it <laughs> goop out okay there we go so this is the 24 karat gold it's very shiny it's highly pigmented I can tell and the other shade of gold there's four different shades of gold I believe um, and then this one is lighter it's the pearl gold so this one's a bit more subtle um, and not sure if I want to use this one or that one. So I just kind of brought some stuff and we'll see how it goes um, as we play along. But I'm not going to dilly-dally further. Let's get started. Um, um, these, are the, these are Would You Bend moldings. So I added these. This dresser was completely flat um, when I got it. So all of the raised details are being added are would you bend? I am adding more. However, I'm not sure. Um, the, I am adding a lot more. However, I'm not sure um, how I'm going to do it. This one's a bit of a complicated design. Um, I'm The original one that I did years before has um, stenciling a mosaic 
sort of stenciling on the front using uh, various shades of decor wax. So it has that underplay. Um, so I, ha I, I want to do that. Uh, however, I didn't add all the other ones because I'm going to add them on top of the stenciling so that it's easier for me to get the stenciling um, in the background, if that makes sense, and then add it on top so I'm not like trying to go around the moldings. Um, and you can glue them on paint. I've never had them fall off. Um, I've never had any sort of like adhesion issues with it. As long as you prep properly, you shouldn't have any sort of problems with your um, paint at all. So. Yes, they are. The metallic pieces are awesome. Okay, I'm going to move this up and we'll get painting. Oh, of course they put everything behind me. All right. So I think I'm going to start with some of the purple because I love purple and play around with that to start with. So this is the violet. Um, color violet this is the violet right here is it gonna focus so I'm gonna start with this one and kind of like brush it on let's see I'm trying to choose a brush pick a brush All right. okay I'm gonna use um, one of the smaller brushes first to start out with so I'm just gonna dab a tiny bit not gonna do too much this already has some color under it, so I just want it to be kind of like uh, sheer and not too... not too opaque. So that's kind of my goal with this one right here. Alright, hope you can see that. So I'm just kind of brushing it on. This brush is damp. Let's add a little bit of the purple here and there. Ooh, that is pretty. So I'm just going to do it here and there. Okay, it is fairly sheer when it's thin, so I'm going to apply a bit more on top of the um, copper. This is a Modern Masters Burnt Orange is um, and a lot. So the base is metallic, uh, the Modern Masters Metallics, the Burnt Orange it's called, and then I added um, some of the Chrome Red. And then I added a bit of uh, copper spray um, and, oops, sorry, I'm trying to focus, okay. Um, some of the copper spray uh, so that it, it gives you this like really um, rich looking orange color. That's really shiny. Um, that looks pretty amazing in person, but since you can't see it, I'm just going to describe it with my words, but it's very shimmery as well. Um, so I love adding on the layering the metallics, kind of. so I'm just kind of brushing this here and there. Um, since I'll be using more than one of the colors, I just kind of want it to look fun, you know, kind of fun and exotic um, with that. And these moldings are amazing as well. I keep saying amazing, but they really are. They truly are. Um, very high quality. They are made out of wood fiber, but they're extremely durable. Um, and there's a ton of different designs to it. So if you can't find a piece that has elaborate details, you can create them yourself. So definitely take a look at the Would You Bend moldings. Um, they also came out with some new stuff. I haven't had a chance to see, but I will. Um, they have some new releases as well that they just shared and a bunch of giveaways too. So head over to their group and their page for uh, some giveaways that they're doing. But 
but I think you're going to love them. When you look at the pictures on um, the website, it's a bit hard to envision what the moldings exactly look like. Um, I know for me, I had a um, hard time with like dimensions, even though I measured it, it's like, it's just, you know, it sometimes like, for me, I'm more visual, so um, seeing it in person is what made me decide on the ones that I did. A lot of them come in sets of two, which is really useful because rarely do I use uh, one of anything. So having the matching uh, mirror image pairs really helps. All right, so this is a bit of the violet that I added on. So I'm gonna try another one. All right, so let's see how the you know, the primary green it's called looks. So this is the very uh, bright green. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that on here. And, ooh, peacock is what this reminds me of. I think I'm gonna have to create a special peacock blend for myself. Yes, this is reminding me a lot of the peacock colors. It looks rather a bold, as a green but when you see it on the actual surface it's very beautiful so definitely giving me peacock vibes there with it so I'm kind of creating that um, you know like carnival glass look that I like to do um, with my pieces you can this is a way you can create your own carnival glass uh, finish as well is to use these and kind of layer them you know you get to choose the colors you want to do and kind of just layer them on top of each other and you'll get that really beautiful complicated looking finish that's not really that complicated but I'm trying not to like add too much on my brush since I want to kind of layer it. I'm going to do the blue next, but I wanted to see how this green was going to pop on the top of the orange here. Burnt orange. Okay, and they dry. Yep, dries pretty quick, quickly. I believe this is water-based. I think it's water-based. Okay, so I'm just kind of going over the grooves here and there. I'm just gonna have fun with this. Kind of. This is the part that I love the most is uh, when you when I get to finally start putting my design together after I have everything prepped. And then kind of just like adding stuff and seeing how it looks as well. On top of the purple, it does, it definitely gives, it looks a bit more blue. So I'm seeing a bit more blue when it's on top of the purple right there. Okay, I'm going to dampen my brush a little bit again. I want this to be semi-opaque, I don't want it to be opaque. I want it to look opalescent a bit, so that's why I'm putting it on thin and not very thick whatsoever. That I know, aren't they? They're water-based. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, non-toxic water. I don't smell anything whatsoever. So, um, no fumies. Just beautiful colors that you can check out. Ooh, that looks so pretty. Wow. I have a feeling I will be, these will be my new best friends. Okay. Wow, 
this is amazing. I think the advantage of this over the decor wax actually is that it dries much more quickly so you can top coat it sooner rather than waiting for it to dry. And also with the decor waxes, you have to let the base dry a bit so it doesn't get muddy, you know, like when you're doing the colors on, on top of each other. Um, oil always, oil based always takes longer to dry, so I th think this is uh, one of the benefits over decor waxes. with new products. All right. Yeah, this definitely reminds me of my favorite shade of the wax, which is the peacock one. It, it's got that same tone to it. But when I layer it on top of the purple, it's more bluish, so that's really cool. All right, I'll be adding the blue in a little bit. Just wanted to see how this would look. really want it on the center only on the moldings. This one was um, a set of two of the corner ones um, and I just kind of created this square looking for a centerpiece for a, a centerpiece design for that one. Okay, all right, so that is the green. Let me see how the blue looks. All right, so the blue, I want the bright one. Okay, this one. So I want the bright blue. Here we go. So this is the brighter blue one that I'm now going to be using and putting on. finger wiping. All right. Oh, wow. So pretty. All right. So this is the blue. Right. And I'll be putting up the link, um, to, uh, my link to for, um, the Would You Bend and Posh Chalk products. It's weird with Facebook, sometimes I write the descriptions in and then once I like flip it over and start the live, it erases. I don't understand Facebook. Okay, so you can see this is the blue doing on top like this. something else. Okay. See, I'm applying it very thin. I do not want it to be too thick. Because I want the colors to blend into each other. Should I go for the red too? I kind of want to do the red too. Let's see how that one looks. Add a little touch of the blue right here and right here. Go. Gosh, I love this. Oh, 
Awesome. What do you guys think? Let me bring you up a little bit closer so you can see the details better. Just don't want to hit my head into my phone. So this is what we did here just with uh, the three, three shades. Yeah, just with only three. So pretty amazing stuff. All right, let's go for the larger one on the top. Okay, they're still there, good. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the top one now too and just repeat kind of the process of what I did. So I'll start with the purple. I don't think it really matters what color that I start with, honestly, um, you know, since I'm just kind of like layering these. I feel like it doesn't really matter, but uh, you can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. But this one you're going to see more because of how large it is. Okay, so I'm going to add purple here and there. And try to get this one not too thick. on here. My gosh. A video of my setup? Do you really want to see my my embarrassing um, mess? <laughs> I, I will uh, I can do a video but it's not it's nothing impressive. <laughs> so it's basically a huge um, uh, outdoor tent with spray tents inside of the tent. So tents inside of tents is basically my setup. Um, but it works. So until the day I can own a home with a three car garage, fully finished, <laughs> this is going to be it for me. Probably kind of weird to hear someone like, especially female, dream about a garage. <laughs> Usually you're dreaming about like the bedroom or, and I dream of the perfect garage for me to use. My husband will not have the garage. <laughs> He's pretty much resigned himself to the fact that the garage will never be his. <laughs> Unless he builds a second one for himself, but like she sheds are good, but I'll take a big old garage any day. All right, I'm just doing this a little at a time, but I could probably be a little less stingy. There. Okay. All right, I'm gonna add a tiny bit more and then I will move on to the other ones. I do like how they look on top of each other, so I think I'm gonna be a bit more generous with the purple this time. Now that I see how it can kind of over lay on top of each other but still show the tone differently. <laughs> Your car. Well, a bus definitely is that oh, it's 75-year-old school car of yours. Yes cars, I mean, our car is a, uh, has never been inside the garage. a little bit too much. I kind of glopped that one a bit. So I'm using a s synthetic artist brush too. Is it synthetic? I think it actually might be real. I don't know. But it's a flat, a flat brush that I'm using. All right, I'm going to start doing some of the green now and put that on top as well. 
probably hear some airplanes as usual because uh, of the flight school near us. But yeah, do you see what I mean by the peacock? Now that you can see it a bit larger with it, it definitely looks like peacock tones to me when you put it on top of the purple a bit. Save that for the blue, I think. Just kind of uh, layer it on top. Uh, oh, I missed this little medallion, and that would be my screaming three-year-old. <laughs> uh, this is. These are the joys of working from home. My husband's uh, home, but he's. <laughs> I really love this green. I did not when I when you just look at it, it looks so bright green. But really, it's a very um, it's almost turquoise ish. So to me, anyways, the green one looks pretty, really pretty. All right, so let me add more of the green in this top area. Well, brush it everywhere. I'm only doing the raised areas. I'm not going to um, touch the other areas. So, just the raised parts of the mold, mostly. Mostly just the. Oops, that one went on a bit thick. Let me get this watery. Yeah, there we go. Just don't want it to. Look too heavy in certain places. You'll have a lot of fun doing this. If you do uh, buy the these patina paints, or, uh, paints, they are a lot of fun. Just seeing how they look. Alright, let's add some of the blue. Alright, now this is going to make Katie look even more. This is the blue. I'm kind of just want this to be. I still want the base color to shine underneath it, which is why I painted the um, moldings along with the dresser, because I still want the tones of the dresser on the, um, the moldings, but I want them to look different, so that's why I kind of did that, but so this is the blue, you can kind of see the blue next to the green, and then when I put some on the green, it kind of creates like a more teal look to it, so if I add it a bit, you know, it, it looks a bit more teal. And then on the purple, it just looks, it just has that uh, shimmer of it, but not much of the color itself with that right here. I want to add more purple now, so I'm just going to go back and forth with my brush. Add a bit more of the purple. I'm just kind of overlap it like that. I love the purple, but I'm actually more 
astonished with the blue and the green. And then, once I add a bit of gold, um, it should kind of uh, make it look a bit more cohesive uh, once I do a tad bit of the, of the gold. Because I don't want this to look, to stand out too much. There's just going to be a lot of elements going on this dresser, and uh, colors are very important to tie in everything together. So if I add a bit of the gold, it kind of will complement the orange with the warm tones. So that's why, plus the hardware is going to be gold, so. And then once I add the hardware, it will definitely tie it together. Hardware is kind of like the finishing touch. The cherry on top of the sundae, it's the, it really ties in everything. Let's add a tiny bit of the purple here, so I'm just kind of going slow on this because No rush, but these are easy to paint on because they're so big. But I love, I love this pediment. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, I'm gonna add a bit more of the green too. Just trying to make it, you know, look uh, layered with the colors. I'll have to do this on a flat surface and um, teach you how to blend the colors together on a flat surface. Okay, I think I got it the way I like. Just want to make sure I get all the sides, you know. Alright, and I'm going to do the touch of gold on the middle one because that one's completely dry now, so I can add a bit of the gold to it. After I get this area. Thanks, okay. I think this looks good. Wait, maybe a little bit more of the blue. A little bit of the blue here. Okay. Ooh. So much. Okay. Just want to hit all these areas that I missed. good. All right now I'm going to go to the bottom and add a bit of gold. So I have, let's see, hmm, I'm thinking I'm going to use Richard Gold, the 24 karat gold paste. So this is the 24 karat gold paste. And I'm just going to do a touch of it on top of it so you can see this is the gold and let's see. Alright, I'm going to see just brushing it on how it's going to go. 
I don't, I don't want it on too much. I'm gonna use some finger painting. <laughs> this one's gonna be my finger technique. <laughs> my finger painting technique. So, because I just want to touch, but I don't want too much at all. So let's do a touch of the gold with my fingers here and there. I knew I brought this towel for a reason. Okay. So I'm just <laughs> dabbing my fingers. I should have used the uh, the gold pigment with the infuser, but I uh, didn't think about that, so I will do that next time. However, the, uh, the texture paste works very well. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. just uh, adding a little here and there, but I don't want it to stick up like that. Okay. it on. And add a tiny bit. So just a little bit of gold here and there, you know, a little bit of glam here and there. However, these other colors are going to be the main point. I just need to Trying to keep my finger a little bit damp so this thing just doesn't not go on too thick. Very advanced technique right here. This finger technique is very, very advanced as you can see. <laughs> Good. I don't want to overdo it. Okay. All right, there you go. I think this is good enough for this one. And then I'll just add a little bit of the gold on the top too. After I get my fingers, I have the Midas touch right now. <laughs> so here we go for the top one. Add a bit of gold too. I guess this is what they meant when he said everything you touch turns to gold, <laughs> literally. Just wanna do all of the raised areas. So just a little bit to make it a bit richer. Rubbing it lightly on. Beep, boop. Glad you guys like it. I, I, this is one of the designs that makes me happy whenever I create it. It's also one of my most popular selling designs, but um, I love doing the Moroccan colors. It's just uh, so, like, you can't help but be happy using all of these colors and just definitely makes you smile and it's like almost like a warm hug you know like the orange is like but it's very fun to do it and this is when I do teach in my master class advanced so it's there I 
forever and have to add this new technique on my class. So just adding a little bit of gold hands drying, fingers drying up. there with this. I just want to get some of the, more of the edges here and there. There's a little uh, kind of just give it a small little touch of gold. Okay, yep. And land it right there. Okay, it's about enough gold. Want too much gold. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Just a touch of the gold. And I think it just kind of makes it more, you know, just more uh just richer looking. Alright. So that is there. And then for all of you that came on late, I'm going to go ahead and just do the last one on the bottom um, so you can see the process or catch it on replay, of course, once I'm done. But let's see if I can get this to go all the way down. Um, okay. I will have to back it up. Just uh, let me uh, get this camera there, angle it correctly. Hopefully I don't fall into it. That would be embarrassing. So okay. Hopefully it's is that gonna stay? Are you gonna stay? Yeah. Okay. There. Okay, good. So oh let me see. Let me actually use a newer brush because I let that one dry out a bit too much. Alright, I'll just go ahead and use this one now. I let it sit out a little bit too much. So let's start out with the green this time instead of the purple. So I'll just start out with the green and see how that goes. God, I love this green so much. It looks amazing on the orange. It's so beautiful on the orange. dampening my brush a little bit and try not to headbutt my phone. <laughs> oh, drippage. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, that would be embarrassing to headbutt into my phone stand. And I'm just making it semi-opaque. I don't want it to be completely opaque. This is all about the interplay of metallic shades to create depth. So I want it to look different in every angle of light when you look at it. Is the whole point to me of metallics is that interplay of the light, which is why I use them so much because you can't get that with um, more with matte paints. Um, unless you use like a satin or glossy finish on the mat, but still it's not the same um, as metallics. Metallics are just my addiction. <laughs> I will never stop using them. Um, and I use them a lot, so it's, it's kind of... Okay, I'm just gonna water this a little bit more down so it's a... Uh because this molding is large. Probably, oh, why? It's about a tiny touch here and there. And, nope. Oh my gosh. 
I love this so much. Sorry, I'm probably tired of hearing me gasp with excitement, but I really, this is, I'm, I'm impressed. It was much more than I expected it to be. Just how iridescent everything is going to look. So I'm just going over the. I think with um, anything raised, adding color, at least two shades of color to it, helps you see the details better. When it's just one color, it's it kind of just blends in, which is not a bad thing if you want a subtle look. But for me, it's more like go big or go home. So I like the ornate details for that reason. It just kind of really makes you notice what's actually on the furniture piece and how everything looks. Um, stuff that you're, you probably wouldn't have noticed or seen before. So it's... I'm mostly adding on the the green right now. The teal looking green. And then I'll do the purple, but just switch it up a little bit and do this one first. go and add a little bit on All right, I'm gonna have to do a turquoise and orange piece I think next time I really wanted to not think these two colors wouldn't marry so well Oh, whoops. Sorry. Did it fall? <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to get this into... Okay. Hopefully you can see it. Sorry about that. But yes, I think my next piece that I do um, that's not a custom is going to be turquoise and orange and gold. Alright, let's add some of the purple, the violet. Uh, so. Doing it on different areas. Using a very damp brush. bit more here. Here. And here. here too. I'm just kind of lightly brushing it on um, in certain areas just to get like a tiny bit of it on it but not a ton and I want it to kind of blend a bit more in the more flat areas or the larger surface areas I shouldn't say flat but we'll need to around blending this on a flat surface. Uh, get this a bit more in here. All right, I'm just gonna try to brush it lightly. You definitely don't want to use a very large brush in detailing. Okay. 
around a little bit here. All that. But I've barely used any of this at all, so just a little, the tiny jar is actually, will last you a while just because of how concentrated the pigments are on this paint. And I am curious about the red, but I don't know, should I? I just don't know. I'm curious. I am curious about the red though. I think the red would look amazing too. Just don't know if I should. Over. Oh, that one is too streaky. Little streaky right there. Okay. So let's see. Did I miss any? Yep. And there are certain places. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of the blue now here and there. Just want to make sure I didn't miss any uh, little areas. Is why does this keep doing that? I'm sorry. Goodness. Keep having to see my dirty thigh. <laughs> This is not the point of this video. So, sorry about that. I don't know why I keep sinking down. Well, I do know it's gravity, but you know, I don't know why it's not staying put for me. It's all right, we're almost done, so I will try to get through this bottom area. We have a lot of bunnies in the neighborhood. And let's just brush it on a little bit more. I think the blue's good. So after that, we'll be fairly much done. And this you can seal with any water-based um, top coat of your choosing, so you can use anything that's water-based that you want uh, to seal it with. However, it does stay on very well, so. All right, I think a little bit down here, right here to see on this angle. Oh, I missed that one spot. So I like to, uh... there we go. Looks better now. This. Okay. I may, I'm going to try some of the red. I'm just too curious about how it's going to look, so I'm going to go for it. I forgot to put the lid back on my metallic paste, which is a no-no because you don't want it to dry out. All right, so here's the red that I showed you a bit earlier. Um, and it's a very, it looks very bright. It looks almost coral, um, actually. So let's see how this looks. The bottom is has a bit more um, reddish tones here and there, so I think Depending on how this looks, it will look. Ooh. All right, it kind of gives it like a touch of pink almost, I would say. If you can see that, can you see that? It's like, like a pink, hot pink. I'm actually glad I, oh, I'm gonna have to add it now. So that created a little bit of pink, which looks 
really pretty with the purple. So just a touchy of the pink. So not too thick. Giving it Kind of just doing it top of certain things here and there. It's went on a tad bit too thick, okay. Right, I'm just kind of overlapping it with the purple especially to get it a little bit more right here. I like it. I really love it. Yeah, it just gives it a tiny bit of like a tiny bit of pink to it. And keeping in mind too, um, if you're the darker your base, the more bright these are going to look. And also depending on your the base color, the shade is going to be slightly different. I'm doing this on orange, um, but if you're doing it a little bit more opalescent, it definitely affects the, um, the exact shade of it. However, I don't believe you could really go wrong with this. So. No, I can't do the gold. I have to let this dry a bit more before I touch it. I don't want to ruin what I just did. But I'm so glad I have all these colors. Okay. Looks especially lovely on the orange, so that's I should have used more of it. I will be adding a bit more of it on certain areas up there. Just uh, didn't know that looks really pretty. So I have my um, just raise it up a little bit now. So this one I didn't add any of it either. So when I add a little bit of the pink, if I can get my phone stone to. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of the pink, now that I know it's actually pink. On here, I don't know if you can see that. But you can always go back and add more gold, it's not a problem. I just want to add a little bit of this, like just a tiny bit. Added a little bit of it. Oops, just like a tiny little bit right here. It's very hard to see on the lens. I wish I could capture it all the details better, but and then up here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the pink that is red, <laughs> the pink that is red, and then it'll be all good. If you can see that like just a tiny bit of it it just like kind of makes it more shiny so 
not a ton. I think this area needs a little bit of pink. here a little bit of pink and here where I didn't really add much color I'm gonna make it look more red yes on the orange it, it makes it does look red I think it's just like on top of the colder tones of the purple and the blue it looks more like pink, hot pink. Alright, I think that's it. I think that is good. And I will go back and add some of the gold on the bottom line once it dries a little bit more. I don't want to um, scrape off any of the, the paint I just applied on there, but that is it so yes that is all um for my live for today and i'm really glad you could join me um so just a little brief recap these are uh posh talks patina paints um that come in various colors a little tiny little jar right here and uh they have a lot of colors so there's of course gold and um other ones but these are the colors that i have and I kind of used a majority of them on the uh, would you bed moldings. These are the would you bed moldings um, that I glued on. I used uh, wood glue and just kind of glued it on, let it dry, and it's on here really well. And then I just sprayed, uh, spray blended the, the base coat over it and stuff like that. So that's kind of what went on here and added the, uh, the patina paste. So these little, wait, oh, can I balance these patina paste? This is what I added um, on there with a little brush. And then here is the gold that I used. It's the metallic paste that they also have Posh Chalk. And this one is the 24 karat one. So this is the true, more true gold tone um, of the paste. However, there are other uh, gold tones, the pale gold. I did not end up using that one. Um, but this one's pretty too, just lighter of course, and then I had this one as kind of a backup in case I uh, needed it, and this is uh, the same shade as this one, just in a different um, consistency. So this one is thicker, it's a paste, this one is a bit thinner, however very thick too, um, as far as paints go, uh, so you can kind of like water it down a little bit if you need it uh, to go on a bit more smoother and stuff like that. But they're perfect for the embellishments, any sort of raised detailing. I have a suspicion they will look excellent, stenciled too, um, but I'm going to do that on my own and see how it turns out. So I think they're going to look pretty amazing stenciled. We'll see. And that's pretty much it. So I'll post um, my link up to uh, where you can see all the Would You Bend and the Posh Chalk stuff. Um, and what else am I missing? And that's pretty much it. Yeah, so I'm really happy you could join me. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you learned a little bit, and I will catch you sometime later this week with my um, Hocus Pocus slides. So, all right, bye guys. Thank you so much.